Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today you've joined me in a rather blustery autumn day here in southern England and I wouldn't ordinarily make a film in these environmental circumstances but this particular film has uh, some time sensitivity because a viewer has written to me with a question which I really need to answer very quickly. Uh, and I will read the question to you right away. So this is a question from John, John Stokes. And uh, he writes to me to explain to me that he's just putting the finishing touches to an outfit he intends to wear to pay respects uh, to our late queen when he goes to visit uh, her lying in state in Westminster Hall in the next couple of days. Now, just to put some meat on the bones of that element of John's question. Um, right now, I'm filming this video during the period between the Queen's death and her official funeral on Monday of next week. In fact, today is Tuesday. Uh, and I believe it's on Thursday, a period of lying in state will commence in London. So the Queen, who died in Scotland last weekend, will be conveyed to London, where her mortal remains contained within her, her coffin made of English oak will lie in state in Westminster Hall. Now Westminster Hall is a, an iconic location where monarchs of uh, many generations have lain in state before their official funerals. The hall itself is historic in every sense. It is over 900 years of age and uh, it is part of the Palace of Westminster which also houses the House of Commons and the House of Lords, the parliamentary system of the United Kingdom. So on Thursday, as I say, the Queen's mortal remains will be placed in her coffin on a catafalque in the middle of the hall. Uh, on top of that coffin will be the, uh, the royal standard, so the Queen's personal official flag. And on top of that will be the scepter and orb. These are sort of uh, instruments of the office of monarch. And of course, the imperial crown will be center place on top of that coffin. Now, the imperial crown is the, the source of the, the sort of the, the actual element of royalty, the crown itself. Contained within the imperial state crown is the Cullinan II diamond, one of the largest diamonds in the world. It weighs 317 carats, and it is an item which can truly be said to be really priceless. Uh, also on that crown is the, the Black Prince's Ruby, which uh, weighs something to the tune of 170 carats. It's a striking uh, gemstone, which is such a prominent part of the Imperial State Crown. Now, when the monarch lies in state, the purpose of the lying in state period is to allow subjects, loyal subjects of the monarch, to process through the Great Hall to be able uh, to pay their final respects to you know, the, the, the recently deceased sovereign before the official funeral. And of course, they will go then to their eternal rest. And in the case of our queen, she will return to the side of her husband of 73 years, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, and I believe she will be interred in Windsor. But for four days and nights, she will lie in Westminster Hall. Her remains, as I say, guarded by soldiers from uh, regiments which serve the household, the royal household, so forever in their protection. And members of the public can process through, like I say. Now, as you can imagine, this is a historic and an iconic period in British history. The longest reigning monarch in the history of the British Empire, a thousand years. Uh, and of course, many people wish to play a part in that, that whole ceremony. It's understood that around about 750,000 people will seek to take the opportunity to pay their final respects by going into Westminster Hall. Now, the queues are going to be miles in length and the authorities have told people to expect to wait anything between 17 and 35 hours in that queue. Now, the queue itself 
uh, has had special arrangements made, you know, all cafes, public houses, um, churches, everything like that on the route of the queue, which is going to be some five or six miles, um, have got special permission to be open 24 hours a day because the paying of respects will be 24 hours a day. There's no rest here. We've got four days to have this opportunity to pay our final regards to our, our sadly um, deceased monarch. So the queues are in, will be in place very soon. I'm sure people are beginning to queue already. But John, uh, well, he's a British gentleman. He's a, a military veteran. And he writes to me telling me, um, I've put to be together a disposable bag containing a pressed shirt, toiletries, barley sugar sweets and water. Uh, I intend to shave on the hoof as he may wait, of course, in the queue for, you know, maybe two days. It's a heck of an endeavour to get there. Um, and he will throw away the bag once he's dressed uh, before he enters the hall. So he's opted to wear a bespoke two-piece suit with bold Oxford shoes. Um, he will be wearing his medals, but not regimental tie, so we know he's a soldier or former soldier, uh, because he'll be wearing a black tie, as are most of us here in the UK at the moment, as an act of remembrance and respect, obviously, uh, for the death of our fallen monarch. Um, he'll be wearing a cashmere overcoat to keep the weather out because he'll certainly be waiting there overnight. It is truly something of a pilgrimage, you know, to go and undertake this act. Now, the real crux of John's question here is because he says, I am at an impasse over what hat to wear. I have a choice of fedora, homburg, bowler, all a black in colour. I'd like your advice, please. I should say uh, I have hard and soft versions of the Homburg hat. I like the look of the bowler because it's typically British and lends itself to most occasions. However, I'm conscious I was never an officer in the army and perhaps may, people may think I'm trying to be a little above my station. So that's the question which John has asked us to help him with, actually to support him with. And yes. You know, I, first of all, I want to say, John, I wish you all the very best in that endeavour. I truly wish that I could be part of that process of people who will go and pay their final respects to the monarch. As somebody who's served almost the entirety of my adult life under an oath of service to my monarch, um, I truly keenly feel her loss and I wish I could uh, attend the laying in state ceremony to give my regards. I will, however, be at home on that day. It's been created as a bank holiday to allow people the opportunity to stay at home and watch the funeral in its entirety, which I am sure will be a remarkable spectacle. Now, John has given us the indication that he's got a few hats that he has the option of choosing from. Um, a Trilby or a Homburg, whichever you may choose, always a good choice for a formal event. I think the Trilby um, is it cuts a nice balance between being very formal and acceptable in the casual world today. So definitely an option. The Homburg hat. Now, probably the most formal hat that most people will own and wear in the modern era. Um, I own the Homburg. I've got a couple of Homburg hats actually. And to be honest, I would feel a little conscious if I was wearing this out today because these are well, it was the hat chosen by Winston Churchill during the Second World War, and they tend to have fallen somewhat into abeyance. I do love them. I think they are an excellent hat. And you could easily pull it off in London because it is such a sartorially cosmopolitan location. You could wear anything. But for me, without question, there is only one hat which would cut the mustard for a royal situation. And that is, of course, the good old bowler hat. The bowler hat is perhaps probably the hat which is most emblematic of Britishness. And its history, of course, goes way back to 1849, when the bowler hat was commissioned by the first Earl of Leicester because um, gamekeepers on his estate, and he obviously provided the uniforms for his gamekeepers, they kept getting their hats knocked off their heads by low-hanging branches in the forestry, and those hats were damaged. And of course, the Earl would have to pay for the liveries and the uniforms of his staff. So he asked his agent to go in to the best hat makers in London and commission a hat which would be specifically suitable for that situation. 
and the bowler hat is what came of that commission. Um, the hat makers he went into is still in existence today. It is renowned as being the best hat maker in the world. It is of course Locke and Company in St. James's of London and of course they still make the best bowler hats in the world and the hat was designed by William and Thomas Bowler, hence the name Bowler Hat. From the point it was accepted into service by the first Earl of Leicester, it has become one of the most popular hats in human history and uh, you know for good reason. It is robust, it is tough, it is capable. My understanding is that when the, the Earl's agent returned to Lock and Co to check out the viability of the, that newly designed hat, the first thing he did was to put it on the floor and stand on top of it to ensure that the hat would withstand the weight of an adult human being. It did and the hat obviously from that point on became part of British history and society and of course that spread globally. Um, famously the bowler hat, often referred to as the derby hat in America, uh, it was the most commonly worn hat by those individuals that we tend to refer to today as cowboys, the people who were frontiersmen in the old west. Um, very often it's seen in images of um, Billy the Kid and Butch Cassidy because this was the preferred hat of people in that era because of its practicality. The rather short brim means that it wouldn't get caught by the wind and whipped off your head as you were perhaps riding your horse on the range or whatever uh, and it's incredibly robust. It's tough and rugged and it'll take a knock. It doesn't get damaged easily and as I say even on a blustery day like today I've no fears of the hat being whipped off my head by the wind around me because it sits firmly on the head and it is just such a practical item. But of course its greatest attribute for us in this conversation is the fact that it is probably the most synonymous hat with Britishness. It's seen on the heads of you know the famous, the great and the good from Winston Churchill to pretty much every member of the royal family and part of its association with royalty is also what makes me think that this would be the perfect hat to wear. You often see images in the past of the Duke of Edinburgh wearing a, bowling, a bowler hat in many occasions. Um, our new king of course often wore a bowler and even our future king, uh, the Prince of Wales now, Prince William, often was to be seen wearing a bowler hat. Now I understand your concerns about wearing a bowler hat and the fact that you're a military person because it's quite common to see military officers wearing bowler hats when they're in civilian attire maybe attending remembrance parade and such other events. Don't be concerned all right the bowler hat was the common man's hat from the very beginning. It's been subjugated to a degree by the upper classes and the reason why officers often wear the bowler hat uh, in such occasions is because prior to the First World War the bowler hat was the normal hat of wear for gentlemen in London and hence officers visiting London for non-regimental or regimental duty were expected to wear a bowler hat so they would be properly attired when visiting the capital city. But believe me the bowler hat is the ordinary man's hat and you should and could wear it for any situation and I think above all the bowler is somber and appropriate for a funeral particularly of royal status as you find yourself about to attend. So for me there is no question the boil bowler hat would be my hat of choice. Can I say John most sincerely I wish you all the very best in your noble endeavour to pay your last respects to Her Majesty the Queen. We can't be there so perhaps in those brief moments that you have as you process through Westminster Hall you can pay your regards to her on our behalf too and that would be an amazingly gentleman thing and a chap thing to do and I'd love to hear about it when you return back drop me an email it would be great to hear and I will update everybody uh, perhaps with your your tales of what that situation was like for you. So as I sit here now in the rain but protected by my wonderful bowler hat just another attribute of why the bowler hat is so good it's protective against the elements um, I will wish you well. Thank you very much for tuning in today. If you've enjoyed the video don't forget you can give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more like this click that red button and join us as a subscriber. 
If you'd like to support the channel, you can of course, as ever, buy me a coffee, which would be gratefully received. But until the next time, wear your own hat with pride and passion, and I will see you again very soon. <laughs>